In April of 1784, a runaway slave named San Malo buried his axe into a tree and proclaimed, Woe to the white who would pass this boundary. While many slaves in North America escaped bondage through the Underground Railroad, heading west to Texas or north to Canada, enslaved Africans around New Orleans disappeared into the swamps above and below the Crescent City. These maroon communities of men, women, and children sometimes lived in a relatively autonomous existence within the larger slave society. Runaways were attracted to these settlements in the Cypress Swamp because they could live self-sufficiently. They hunted, fished, grew their own food, and sometimes stole provisions. These settlements were often in swampy areas in vast uncharted territory near lakes, rivers, and bayous. Bounty hunters looked for maroons in waist-deep mud along narrow streams, only wide enough for one pirogue. In the maroon colonies, the Africans rejected the European religions that had been forced upon them in most cases, practicing their native customs or incorporating their rituals into the Catholic religion. Runaways constantly had to fight for their freedom from the law and the forces of nature. The San Malo Maroons carried guns, hatchets, and knives. The runaways with San Malo maintained communication with the field hands on the nearby plantations, trading wild game for rice, molasses, and other necessities.